In the second part of our lecture on uh, human reproduction, we'll spend uh, a good chunk of our time looking at the menstrual cycle. Uh, this uh, sometimes can be a, a topic that people have a, a difficult time discussing uh, and saying, you know, why would I want to talk about that in biology class? But in reality, it is really the process that the human body uh, in females sets up to uh, continue our species uh, through reproduction. So a very important process to try to understand We'll just kind of get at the surface of it and, and try to understand what's happening and why in this process we call the menstrual cycle. First of all, it, it is complex. It's a combination of 10 to 12 different chemicals that we call hormones in, in our body, uh, as the human body, uh, that uh, will be coordinated to, to get things ready to go. Usually, uh, the menstrual cycle will produce one egg uh, once a month, uh, can vary in terms of how many eggs are released, depending upon uh, if each ovary is releasing it. But typically it's one egg once per month. And it really is all about timing, and that's where the complex combination of chemicals will coordinate these events, trying to get the timing just right, so that the body is ready uh, for a baby should an egg be fertilized. Uh, and I just basically said that. It's the uterus that we have to get ready, because that's where the, the fertilized egg will implant uh, if we're going to have a successful pregnancy. And so the egg... Uh, gets there uh, and uh, the uterus is ready for it uh, upon fertilization. Now most of the time uh, fertiliz fertilization doesn't occur but every month there is this process to get the body ready just in case, just in case, just in case. If there is no fertilization uh, in the course of a month it's this you know tear down the line in the uterus and rebuild it for the next month. Uh, always in preparation for that moment of, uh, of uh, fertilization. Typically, the uh, menstrual cycle is a 28-day cycle. It does vary by female, uh, so this is just an average. Uh, there are three basic stages to the menstrual cycle, uh, as I kind of mentioned on the last slide. Uh, it does start by tearing down the previous build, and so tear down what was built up in the uterus, then rebuild it, uh, getting ready, getting ready, getting ready, and then make sure that the uterus is ready with extra nutrients and blood, just in case there is a, a potential baby that we have to worry about developing. And if for some reason there is no baby, or I guess it would be the case in, in most months, there is no baby, uh, it would be uh, heading back to stage number one and tear it down and do this process over again. I mentioned those chemicals, hormones. Uh, hormones come into play in lots of different places in the body. They regulate events all over our body. Uh, in, in, not only in uh, terms of the menstrual cycle, in males uh, we have hormones uh, involved in the production of sperm uh, and some of our sex characteristics are, are controlled by hormones in males and females but hormones are also involved in things like uh, our regulating our blood glucose level. You may have heard of insulin before. Insulin uh, is one of those chemicals, uh, hormones that helps regulate our blood sugar levels. So we have many different kinds of hormones. Uh, some of the biggies, kind of the, the big four that we're going to be looking at uh, when it comes to the menstrual cycle are estrogen, progesterone, uh, LH, stands for luteinizing hormone, uh, we'll just go with LH for short, and then FSH uh, stands for follicle stimulating hormone. Again, we'll just go with FSH. I, I don't need you to memorize these hormones, but recognize that these are the big four. Many others are involved in this process, but we'll just kind of look at what these four do. I do want to spend a little time showing this website. Uh, it, it's a good example before uh, getting into the notes. And so uh, there's some, some OK visuals. This is a, a uterus. And they're going to show us the 28-day cycle and what's happening inside the ovary versus inside the uterus and how some of these hormones uh, get involved in the process. And so here you can see the first five days. Uh, they were showing the uterine lining. I'll hit replay here. Showing the uterine lining uh, falling off of the sides, breaking down, being, being torn down, and, and leaving the body through menstrual flow. Uh, this would be that time period where you hear the term, you know, a female has her period. Uh, blood and tissue is being lost from the body, and that is the start of the menstrual cycle. From there, uh, uh, some hormones like FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, will start to get hormone or get uh, follicles inside the eggs to produce a viable egg. All these eggs were immature and we're trying to get one ready to go. <clears throat> Those follicles then will start to release estrogen. Maybe you saw the, the little blurb there happening. I uh, can play this again. FSH gets a couple follicles going 
and then once those follicles are going, estrogen starts to be released from the follicles and a build starts to build the lining up. So that happens for uh, several days. Uh, the lining is not ready to go yet, but there's no egg ready to implant in the uterine lining yet. So we, we still have a little time to get it ready. Uh, about that day 14 time, uh, there's a spike in the hormone LH, luteinizing hormone, and that spike causes one of those maturing follicles to uh, eventually rupture. Get this structure ready, that's our egg that we want to release, get it ready and rupture that egg out of the uh, ovary. That's called ovulation. And so there, uh, the egg is now floating through the oviduct, the fallopian tube, uh, and that happens, as I mentioned, around that day 14, about halfway through the cycles when ovulation occurs. The next couple of days, then, it will be traveling down the oviduct, uh, kind of waiting to see if uh, it will be fertilized. And so at day 15 on, the next couple of days are critical. It's usually about one to two days after that uh, when we might be able to get that uh, fertilized. And it's also over those next couple of days that uh, the uterine lining thickens to its fullest extent uh, and is just totally ready uh, for implantation. So that if fertilization should occur in those couple of days after ovulation, day 15, 16, or 17, now it takes another uh, six to seven days for the, uh, the egg, fertilized or not, to travel into the uterus and the uterine lining is ready to go during those last couple of days of the cycle. So that it's all about timing when a fertilized egg would get there, now the uterus is ready. No sense in having it ready to go when there's going to be no egg present. Uh, here they're going to show um, the what if, you know, during that time right after, um, right after the ovulation, what if a, a, a sperm does come in and fertilize the egg? Uh, the hormone progesterone will be uh, released and telling the body, hey, hold on, we've got something going on here. Uh, it appears that we've got an egg. But if the, the egg is not fertilized uh, and uh, the message then is sent saying, oh, no, nothing's going on, nothing's going on, the estrogen and progesterone that were telling the uterine lining to, to be ready, be ready, be ready, they stop being uh, produced. And once they're stop, uh, they stop being produced, uh, we start that cycle over again those next five days with uh, the, the removal of the blood and tissue from, from the uterus. All right, now back uh, into the notes. Uh, we saw an example uh, of kind of what's going on. Now just a couple of notes to say, you know, remember that day one time is when the first menstrual flow would occur. The blood and tissue would be lost from the body at this point in time. This is because in the previous cycle there would be no baby, and it causes the, the breakdown of the lining of the uterus. Uh, and say, okay, tear down. We'll start this process over again. It does take about five to seven days uh, for the blood and tissue to exit the body. Uh, and then to start that rebuilding process. Uh, during that rebuilding process, remember we're getting ready for you know, what if, what if, what if, and it was that day 14 that was the other big date uh, when the ovulation occurs, the egg is released. Uh, it is at ovulation that there is typically a temperature spike, and uh, that temperature spike uh, can be uh, monitored. There are programs online to monitor uh, when ovulations occur, so that if you are uh, looking to get pregnant, you might monitor oh, when is that temperature spike occurring, and the chart on here is saying, oh, here on the, the 5th of April is when you are most fertile because uh, the cycle seems to occur, that the ovulation occurs on that date uh, if you plot it regularly, and so you'd look for that temperature spike and say, yes, uh, most fertile, now would be a great time to uh, try to conceive a child. Uh, on the other hand, if you're looking to avoid pregnancy and not wanting to get pregnant, you might uh, do something like this uh, to monitor when you are most fertile, most likely to get pregnant, and certainly avoid sexual contact during that period of time uh, when you're ovulating. So there are multiple reasons why you might use it. Um, sometimes they call that the rhythm method uh, as a form of birth control, trying to time it with a rhythm and say, okay, I'm going to avoid those times when I'm most likely to get pregnant. After ovulation is when you certainly are most fertile uh, and most likely to get pregnant. But uh, if you have a sexual intercourse a, a day or two prior to ovulation, 
because sperm can survive inside the female body for a couple of days, two to three days typically, uh, there is a chance that uh, sexual intercourse two to three days prior to ovulation could still lead to uh, a pregnancy. And so uh, certainly uh, the couple of days prior and the couple of days after ovulation are those days when you are m most fertile and most likely to uh, get pregnant. Uh, as mentioned uh, in a couple of videos and animations that we saw, the egg is the thing that gets fertilized while traveling through the oviduct. That's when it will become fertilized and uh, um, then have the best chance to land in the uh, uterus and uh, implant for a pregnancy. I like this picture uh, because it, it plots the days uh, of the cycle, showing then what happens kind of at the beginning. What are the hormone levels looking like and what's happening in the ovary versus what's happening in uh, the, the uterus in terms of the uterine lining. Now, you got to remember there is a, a brain inside the body, and this is we'll, we'll with uh, you know, cerebellum, cerebrum, and brainstem. And uh, some of the glands, uh, the pituitary, pituitary gland inside the uh, brainstem is going to start releasing some of these hormones, uh, LH and FSH. Uh, FSH is going to say, hey, it's, it's time to get uh, the follicle going at the beginning of the stage. So hormones will go down to here. Uh, these structures, the follicle and the corpus luteum, will be releasing some of these hormones then into the body. And the levels of hormones like estrogen and progesterone are what control uh, all of the uterine linings getting thicker and, and getting ready. And so that uh, the timing is, well, right here when uh, the uterus is thickest and most rich in blood, it's the perfect conditions for implantation to occur. Uh, that's also the most likely time about... Um, about seven to eight days after ovulation would occur, that's when uh, the fertilized egg is most likely to be at the uterus. So timing is everything, and uh, all these hormones working together are what will, will coordinate those efforts and those events. Uh, I do have another animation that might be of use. I'm going to choose uh, at this time not to show it, but put it on uh, for your viewing uh, on our Moodle page. We mentioned uh, in the animation before that if uh, fertilization does occur, uh, the now fertilized egg is called a zygote and it begins to divide. Uh, one becomes two, two becomes four, so on and so forth, for, so forth as it travels through the oviduct. And it will eventually implant into the uterine lining. We saw some of that in the Life's Greatest Miracle video. If not fertilized, the egg will travel through the oviduct to the uterus and it will exit the body uh, with uh, the menstrual flow as blood and tissues are lost uh, through the process of menstruation. You may have heard the terminology uh, getting your tubes tied. A uh, more correct terminology would be uh, tubal ligation. Uh, if you are thinking, I no longer would like to have children, I, I no longer want that opportunity to have an egg fertilized, uh, you can take uh, the oviduct or the fallopian tube uh, and tie it off or snip it off so that if an egg now is released uh, from the ovary, it has no chance of being able to sperm that would be coming from this direction. So. Uh, it would stop, it acts as a barrier to stop sperm and egg from meeting and would be considered uh, a form of birth control. Um, well, it is uh, able to be reversed, but that would be a very unlikely event. Some of you may have heard about the birth control pill, certainly considered a form of birth control, but also can be used uh, to just help regulate a cycle. Uh, what it does is it tricks the body into thinking that it's pregnant, so the birth control pills are actually giving hormones like estrogen and progesterone uh, saying uh, hey you're pregnant you're pregnant you're pregnant when you're, you're really not pregnant which tells the brain don't release eggs don't release eggs don't release eggs so no ovulation would occur uh, if no ovulation occurs then no egg is going to be released and then no fertilization could happen and no baby could uh, be uh, formed uh, so uh, there's this then time in, in the pill and you can see maybe a little difference in coloration down here in the picture uh, the darker pills in the picture, for about seven days you stop taking the, the pills and the body's like, whoa, what's going on? Uh, I guess I'm not pregnant, goes through menstruation, sends the, the blood and tissue out of the body, but before it has time to reset the clock and say, okay, it's time to get ready for ovulation, you start taking those hormones again, progesterone and estrogen, telling the body, oh, I think I'm pregnant, I think I'm pregnant, don't release an egg, don't release an egg, and that's essentially how the birth control pill works.